So in this video, we're gonna talk about how to actually style things inside our website. And this is going to be a slightly longer video, so I will have timestamps below, so you can just sort of like skip ahead or maybe at a later point return to this video if there's something specific you want to learn how to do. Now, styling is the thing that actually makes our website look really pretty inside the browser. So right now, as you can see, I have some very basic uh, text inside my index.html file, which is right now just a header one that says, this is the most important text on this page because it is. And we also have a paragraph that says, this is just a simple paragraph. So what I can do is I can go inside my browser. And as you can see, I have the text inside the browser and it doesn't really look that good. So what you can do using styling or CSS is you can make your content look really awesome inside the website. Essentially, it's the styling that actually makes a website look like a website and not just a empty text document like what we have right here because you know this is not really a pretty website. So what we're gonna do to start with here is we're gonna go ahead and go inside our website. And right now we just have the index.html and we also have a main.css which is the style sheet that we're gonna use for this video here. And we did also talk about how to link to the style sheet. So as you can see right here, we have a link that actually links to our style sheet file. Now, the first thing I want to show you here is a small, neat little trick you can do inside your editor so you can actually do things at the same time, which is actually you can take one of these files, like for example, my CSS file, and you can drag it over to the right side. And as you can see, we actually get these small little drag and drop um, hints here that says, oh, well, you can actually drop it over here on the side. So now we can see both the HTML and we can also see the CSS on the side. So we can do two things at the same time. Uh, we do also need to talk about text wrap because right now, as you can see, I did actually enlarge in things. This is typically how I would maybe look at it inside my screen here because I'm teaching this inside a small video. I have to zoom in for you guys. So we need to talk about text wrap. If you go up to view, and go down to where it says word wrap. And you can actually see there's a shortcut for it. So you could actually go ahead and say alt set, and then it would actually activate text wrap, which means that if you go in here and it actually goes outside, cause you can actually see here, if I were to drag, you can see the text is actually popping outside um, the window here. If I were to click it, it's actually gonna pop it down to the next line. So we can actually see it, even though, you know, technically it goes out. So it just jumps down so we can actually see everything. Now, just for the sake of this video here, since like I said, I'm zoomed in quite a bit for you guys to see it, I will not have text wrap activated. I would actually, for me, just kind of like scroll in and out so you can actually see things. Um, I can actually do that with a shortcut. If you hold down shift and then the scroll wheel, it will actually scroll sideways. You can also do that inside browsers in case you didn't know. Uh, so instead of scrolling up and down, holding shift actually scroll sideways. Small shortcut, hey. So what I'm gonna do here is I will show you how to do basic styling when it comes to the text that I already have inside my HTML file. So going inside the style sheet, what we can do is we can talk a bit about how we actually target the different things inside our website and then change them using CSS because we can change the positioning, we can change the colors, we can change the sizes, we can do all sorts of things using styling. Now, before we start talking about how to actually style things, we need to we need to know some things beforehand because this is your first time actually styling something. So we need to talk about how you can implement styling inside your website since there's many different ways you can do it. Now, one thing you can do is you can actually have one style sheet like we have right here. We have the one called main.css and put all the styling for your website inside this one document. That's how I started making websites when I you know, started at my multimedia degree, but later on I realized that, okay, so this is probably not the best way to do things because essentially if you have a contact page inside your website and there is styling that only applies to that particular page, then if I were to go inside my index page, which is the front page, then all the styling for the contact page is also getting loaded, even though it's not getting used, inside the front page. So having everything inside one document means that you're loading up styling or at least it's reading styling that is not gonna be applied inside some of the pages. So the way I recommend doing it is to have one style sheet called main.css that has styling in it that works for all the pages inside the website. For example, if we have a header at the top, all the pages inside your website is probably gonna have that one bar 
at the top of the website that has these links in it. So that styling would actually go inside main.css since that is going to be on all the pages inside the website. Now, if you have a particular styling that only applies to one particular page, for example, inside a contact page, I would make a style sheet called contact.css that would style all the things inside the contact page that would not actually be inside the other pages inside your website. Just to demonstrate this, if I were to actually have a contact page and have styling that only goes inside that particular page, I would actually go ahead and just create a new document by double clicking up here at the top. I would save it inside my CSS folder and I would just simply name it something like contact.css and then just save it. And I would take this contact.css file and only link to it inside my contact.html file. So essentially, if I were to drag it over here, let's say this is our CSS side and this is the HTML side over here. If I were to go up and actually create a new file and call this one contact.html and have that open, we now have an HTML file that is named contact. And what I would essentially do is we can actually go ahead and copy paste everything from our front page, paste it in here. And I would link to the main.css file because we need to have that inside the contact page because that is styling that applies to everything inside the website. But I would also just copy paste it and make sure that I also link to my contact CSS file. So in this sort of sense, we have two style sheets linked to this particular page because it is actually using styling from both the main.css and the contact.css file. I hope this makes sense <laughs> because a lot of people that teach this sort of thing would just tell you to put everything inside one file in the beginning here. And then later on, once you have bad habits, tell you to you know separate CSS into different files. So I think it's better to show you how to do it properly from the beginning, just so you have some good habits going forward. So for now, for practice sake, we're just gonna have one style sheet. Now I'm just gonna go and delete the contact.html and the contact.css file because that was just to kind of demonstrate my point here. So I'm just gonna go and delete these two files. And now I only have my index.html and my main.css. So with that, let's talk a bit about hierarchy. Because if I go inside my CSS file and say I want to style, for example, the paragraph down here, the way you would do that is say that, okay, I want to style all the paragraphs inside my website by writing P space, curly brackets, opening and closing curly brackets. And then you just kind of click enter to shift them down on separate lines. And then you can write CSS in between the curly brackets here. Anytime you want to do one particular styling that goes on one line inside your CSS file. So for example, let's say I want to change the color of my text inside the website. I could say color colon and then semicolon. And in between here, I can then say a particular color. In this case here, I can say blue, which would change the text of my paragraph into blue. So if I were to refresh my website, you can now see that my paragraph has turned blue. So let's say I go inside my CSS file and further down somewhere below here, I'm saying, okay, you know what? I'm gonna do another styling on my paragraph and I want to change this one to red. Now, which one is it going to use on my text inside my website? If you guessed red, then you would be correct because it is reading it from top to bottom, meaning that it's going to read it and say, okay, so I'm being told that the paragraph needs to be blue. Oh, wait a second. Now I'm reading that it's supposed to be red. So I'm gonna turn it red. So saving it, going inside my browser, you can now see that my paragraph is red. And this goes for when we link other style sheets as well. So if I were to actually create another style sheet, just to demonstrate, and just name it something like test.css, I'm gonna save it, and link that inside my main, uh, not my main, my index file. So I'm just gonna put it below here and say this one is called test.css. Let's say we want to make this red inside this new style sheet, what is going to happen? Is it gonna be blue or is it gonna be red? It is going to be red. So as you can see, it's also going to read the linked style sheets from top to bottom, meaning that if I were to go back in here inside my uh, HTML file, I can actually take this link that we just pasted in and actually put it before the main.css. Now, which color is it going to be? It is going to be blue. 
And that is because, like I said, it's reading it from top to bottom, meaning that the last styling it saw is going to be what gets applied to the website. So going back inside the text editor, I'm just gonna go ahead and delete it again here because we only need to have one file. I was just demonstrating things. Uh, so let's go ahead and delete the test.css and actually just completely delete it here, like so. And with that, let's actually talk a bit about different styling, because now you actually saw, I did briefly touch upon it here, but I, I just kind of like, fast went over it just because I wanted to demonstrate the hierarchy thing. Uh, but let's actually talk about how we target things inside our HTML file so we can actually style it inside our CSS file. So right now, as you can see, we can actually write the name of a particular tag, which means that right now, all the paragraph tags inside the website are gonna be this particular color at least when it comes to the text inside our website. But there's also another way we can target things. So right now we're just saying all paragraph tags, but what if I want to target a particular paragraph tag inside other certain elements? So let's say for example, I have a div tag. So if I go inside my uh, body tag here and just say I have a div tag here, I'm gonna copy my paragraph, delete it, and paste it inside the div tags. Now, if I were to go inside my style sheet over here, I can actually go ahead and say that I want to target a div inside the website and then any paragraph tags that is inside a div element. So this means that if I were to actually take this particular paragraph that is here, we can actually just copy it back down there. And in this case here, which one is going to be blue? Because right now we have two paragraphs. We have a paragraph, then we have a header, and then we have a paragraph. So if we were to go inside the website, you can now see that the top one is blue and the bottom one is black. And that's because I said I only wanted to style paragraphs that were inside a div. So we can kind of create a hierarchy list over here by saying I want to first say we select a div and then a paragraph inside a div. And we can take that even further. I can also say I want to grab a span tag, which is one that we haven't talked about, but there is something called a span tag, which I could also go in here and say, I'm just gonna go ahead and put a span right here. So we have the last part of the paragraph wrapped inside a span tag. So we would go inside my website, refresh it. You can now see that only the last part of the paragraph has turned blue. So in this kind of way, we can actually select elements within elements using this particular method here. Now, this is not how we typically do things inside CSS. This is one way to do things, but a lot of times, this is not how we target things. We do also have something called classes and IDs, which are attributes that we use inside our HTML. We did already talk about attributes in one of the previous episodes. Essentially, this is when we go inside an HTML tag. And let's actually go ahead and clean this up a little bit because we don't actually need to have all of this. So if I were to go inside my paragraph tag, I can create an attribute called ID is equal to double quotes. And then I can actually go ahead and give this any kind of name that I want to give it. Of course, you should probably give it a name that makes sense. So I could, for example, say main paragraph styling. Now this is a bit overkill because usually you wouldn't create this long a name, but just to you know make sense of things, I can go ahead and call this ID main paragraph styling. Then I can copy the name, go inside my style sheet, and then I can say I want to target any IDs using the hashtag symbol and then give it the name of the ID. So basically we're saying we're grabbing an ID called main paragraph styling and then any sort of HTML that has this ID is going to get styled. So if I were to go ahead and do this, go back inside my browser, refresh it, you can now see that everything inside the paragraph has turned blue. Now I did say any HTML elements that had this particular ID was going to get styled, but the thing is that when it comes to IDs, we can only use this once inside a particular HTML element. So for example, this particular paragraph now has this ID, which means that if I were to do this and copy it and put it inside the H1 tag, go inside my browser, refresh it, you can see that it is working, but if you were to actually try and get your website passed by a website validator, this is not going to get passed because you can only use one ID per, well, per page inside your website. And the reason for this is that the whole idea behind using a ID, which is a unique identifier, is that you need to be able to target one particular thing inside your website. And there's actually a small trick with this because if you have a link inside your website, 
you can actually go ahead and link to one of these IDs. So when you click a link inside your website, it actually scrolls down the page to that particular ID inside your website. So that's kind of a cool little link thing to, to share with you. But this basically means that we can't use IDs or at least the same ID multiple times. But we also have something called a class. So if I were to go in and just undo the styling of my H1 here and rename my ID to class is equal to and then the same name, then all of a sudden, if I go inside my CSS file and change my hashtag into a punctuation, which means class, then inside my website, the exact same thing is going to happen. My paragraph had turned blue. Because in this sort of way, we can also target specific elements using classes instead of IDs. And now you may have some questions because why do we have IDs and classes? What is the main difference between them? When should you use which one? The rule of thumb is unless you have a very specific reason to use an ID, don't use an ID. Because like I said, it's supposed to be a unique identifier and it's something that we use, for example, inside JavaScript later on when you actually get into JavaScript programming in order to do certain things and to make sure that there's only one particular item inside the website that you're grabbing using JavaScript. Or for example, if you're linking to something inside your web page further down the page, you can use IDs to actually scroll down the page to that particular piece of content. So, you know, you don't want to be using IDs unless you have a particular reason to do so. Use classes whenever you want to style using CSS, just because you want to do basic styling. So now the next thing I want to show you is, can we actually add multiple classes to the same HTML element? So if I were to go in here and actually go inside the double quotes, I can actually click space. And then I can also say test because now I added a second class name, which means that if I were to go inside my main.css file and say punctuation test curly brackets, I can actually go ahead and add another styling to this particular piece of HTML. So I could, for example, go in and say, I want to have a font size and I want to give it a, a 70 pixel size. And if I were to go back inside my website, you can now see that my paragraph has increased in size. So we can add multiple classes to one particular paragraph or just one particular element inside our website and do that using these classes here. And this also means that you can actually take this and copy it and paste it onto other HTML elements and actually do the same thing. So again, if I add it to my H1 here, go inside my website, refresh it, this would actually be legit it's not going to give you any sort of errors inside of website validator or anything. This is how you would actually target specific elements inside your website and actually style them using classes. And now if we were to actually go and delete the class from the H1 and just say we have the main styling that I, I had here to begin with, I can actually go ahead and say I want to target a body HTML element, which right now is this one right here, and say I want to go inside of it and target any classes that are inside this particular body element with this particular name. So in this sort of sense, just like with the first example where we could actually go inside nested elements, we call it, and style it that way, we can also do that using our styling here. Now you will notice that right now, uh, my text is still blue here and that's because I forgot to save inside my HTML file. So if we were to go back again and refresh, you can now see that it's working. Again, make sure you save your files whenever weird stuff happens inside your website. Double check for that. And there's actually one particular way you can tell because the little X icon up here in the tab is gonna be round. So if it's round, it means that you made a change and you haven't saved it yet. Now I am sitting here watching my notes and seeing all the different stylings that I want to show you. And I think it's a very good idea that I don't do that in this episode here because it's going to fry people's brain. Uh, so for this video here, we're just gonna talk about how to actually target particular HTML elements and how to actually style them using, you know, classes, IDs, and just how to target them using the HTML element names inside the style sheet. So for now, let's go ahead and stop the episode here. And then I'll talk about how to style things using many different types of CSS styling in the next video. So thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time.